Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with with uh, Business Marketing. Uh, we are now on ethics and social responsibility, something that uh, has come to the forefront of the business and corporate market in the, in, in the most recent years, uh, but has been ignored in the past. Uh, but it's something that we definitely need to discuss, uh, whether it be in your regular business, uh, general business class, uh, whether it be in your business marketing class, or whether it be in a, in a management class where it's very, very uh, important. Uh, but each of the business topics always touch on ethics and social responsibility, even uh, the classes when I teach accounting. Our learning objectives for the chapter are define ethics in the context of marketing. Uh, so it, it, some people say, well, what, what does have ethics have to do with marketing? Well, it has a lot to do with it, uh, you know, especially when you get into uh, the sales realm. Uh, identify common ethical issues and their impact on individuals and organizations. Uh, everybody doesn't start off uh, being an individual that, that does not want to act ethically, but a lot of times uh, their corporate or their company environment, uh, it changes them because they're attempting to reach goals or certain things of that nature uh, that, that might change their ethical perspective. Uh, you want to identify ethical issues introduced through uh, new marketing channels and explain the role of social responsibility in marketing. And, and one of the examples that I've provided before is a company that I work for, is it ethical for them to grab or snag someone's information uh, while they're online and give them a phone call for that product? Some people would say yes, yeah. some people would say uh, that it's you know all fair game, uh, but then other people would say no, it's not very ethical. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, generally speaking, students believe that there are two primary reasons to act ethically uh, and you know, uh, again, it's not every single student, so I'm not saying specifically you, but they're just saying generally speaking. Uh, number one is acting ethically is the right thing to do from a moral perspective, right? So it's the right thing to do, so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and if you act unethically, uh, then you might get caught and be punished, right? So one is for I'm doing it for the right reasons. The other is uh, because I might get punished. Uh, two different modes of thinking, uh, but you may end up with the same decision uh, with either with either mode of thinking, which is, you know, ideally the place that you want to be. But let's take a look at the uh, uh, top, quote unquote, uh, top eight list of ethical concerns, uh, gifts, gratuities, bribes. Uh, you know, so so a lot of times people, you know, will, will bribe people. Like, let's say you bribe somebody in a different department to, to look the other way. Uh, I worked for a company and a lady, she bribed another individual with just uh, bringing him a bottle of alcohol every week. And he would look the other way and rubber stamp all of her um, her accounts payable receipts. And she ended up embezzling, I think, two hundred fifty thousand dollars from the, you know, from the company that we're at uh, because that because that was going on. Uh, number two, price discrimination and unfair pricing. All right. So, uh, you know, we, we may discriminate uh, and, and price things higher for certain people and lower for others. Uh, dishonest advertising is number three. Uh, like, uh, you know, you think about like the bait and switch, like, hey, we've got these TVs down there, 72 inches, and this is how much they sell for. Then when you get down there, they're all gone because, oh, the manager bought it and then he, you know, returned it back to the to the company, uh, you know, games like that. Uh, number four, miscellaneous uh, unfair competitive practices. Uh, like uh, some some people may say it's unfair. Some people may say it's okay, uh, like price matching. Uh, so say anything that you find that's lower than the price that we have, we'll match it. In essence, that means that there's no reason to go anywhere else because I could just look through the paper, get all the best, you know, best deals and then come to your store. Uh, cheating customers, unfair credit practices and overselling. Uh, number six, price collusion by competitors or price fixing. Uh, you know, I, I talked about um, in the and who would have known that there was a, a, a yogurt cartel where they would all get together and basically decide on what the, the prices were. Uh, that's the last market I think that there would be a cartel in, but uh, but there was, and uh, I forget uh, who it was, but they you know they purchased one of the yogurt companies and then they handed that 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 information over and that broke up uh, the the yogurt cartel. Uh, number seven, dishonesty in making or keeping a contract, and number eight, unfairness to employee uh, and prejudice in hiring. Uh, you know they they've a lot done a lot of studies where they send. Um, you know, certain resumes with certain names uh, that you know that this they're this ethnicity and uh, the same exact resume, same experience and everything. And that person uh, that doesn't have the, you know, uh, eth ethnically sounding name uh, gets the call. Uh, but but that that person doesn't. Uh, so and, and they're saying like they had they put it, it they mirrored it. They said same school, same experience. Everything was the exact same. And they showed uh, this experiment in which uh, a lot of the people uh, we're saying, hey, this is, you know, uh, we know that this is 
more, well, more than likely, this is what nationality this person is. And those were the ones that ca got called as opposed to uh, the one that sounded they were a certain ethnicity. Uh, examples of ethic violations or ethics violations, bribery, gifts from outside vendors, uh, like our company, we have a certain policy that you can't receive anything over this amount. Uh, payment of questionable commissions, money under the table. So, uh, you know, we're going to pay you a little bit of money, a little bit of money so you can look the other way, and uh, we're going to earn a lot of money, and we're going to give you a piece of that action. Uh, fairness, unfairly placing uh, company interests over family obligations, taking credit for the work of others, right? You might not think that was something that would come up, but yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm a manager, and then I take, you know, credit for all the, the great work that, that my, uh, you know, that my staff has done. Uh, not definitely not the way to be. Um, Inducing customers to use services not needed. I uh, see that a lot, especially uh, from the sales department and manipulation of others. Uh, honesty, uh, lying to customers to obtain orders, never a good thing because it uh, always boomerangs back to you. Uh, misrepresenting uh, services and capabilities. Oh, oh, yes, our company can do this, but they really can't. Uh, and then price, uh, differential pricing, charging higher prices than firms uh, with similar products uh, while claiming superiority. Uh, sell. I just put this little sales format there just so you know. So if you see on the first line, you see that 500000 and a sales quote is a million. You don't get any commission there, so no commission paid. Uh, the sales commission is a still a or sales quote is a million. Uh, you sell, sell a million, you get a 10% uh, um, uh, commission. So how much commission is paid is 100000 an extra 100000 That's a lot. And then 1.5 million, so then you would end up getting 15%. So what you have to think about is what would somebody in such a scenario do in order to get to these two levels? Because that's an extra 100,000 and that's an extra 225,000. I think certain people would do a lot of different things in order to uh, receive a check uh, of that amount. Uh, so you have to think about that, that, you know, you know, salespeople, uh, they go through a very, you know, rigorous uh, hiring process to try and get the best of the best so that they're very, you know, ethically responsible uh, in terms of their decisions and the things that they do in order to get to these uh, uh, various sales goals. These are policies that encourage ethical behavior. You want to define the threshold for behavior. While it should uh, go without saying, the employees are expected to be law-abiding companies, uh, choose to be quite explicit about stating that they require their employees to follow the law. So, you know, in case you didn't know, the law is the law, and when you're within the company, uh, you still have to follow the law there as well. Uh, create expectations for behavior. The policies identify common issues that employees may encounter, such as accepting gifts from suppliers and explain how they should be handled, right? So they know these things are going to happen, so we're going to explain to you how you should handle them. Uh, set policy, so you want to establish uh, company protocols for handling confidential information, including customer data. Don't say, hey, this is some information from a celebrity. Let me talk about everything, uh, you know, relative to his account. Uh, give guidance on making judgment calls, so companies often uh, define how they would like employees to make decisions uh, when guidelines do not adequately cover them, right? So sometimes you have to think outside of the block, box, you know, think a little bit, use your brain in order to come up with the right decision. Uh, and describe reporting and enforcement uh, a procedure. Uh, there's generally a process for reporting and addressing issues, as well as the information about how the company uh, will protect those uh, reporting concerns. You know, typically known as as whistle whistleblowers. Uh, you know, is there an ethics hotline that you can you know report to? Uh, you know, a lot of companies definitely have those. Uh, you know, and it's anonymous line. Um, you know, so that you don't really have to uh, have anything come back to you. Sustainable products. Always great. We've, you know, now we're talking about being ethically responsible, uh, which, you know, ties right into, you know, helping the environment. Uh, it's funny in, you know, a different textbook I was reading, uh, the new stadium of the 49er stadium up north, uh, they were saying like it's a hundred percent like energy efficient. Like, so it has solar panels and has all these different things, uh, you know, that they're doing in order to uh, sustain it, uh, without pulling, you know, additional energy off the grid. Uh, sustainable um, product focus may include a uh, use of organic or raw materials, sustainably harvesting of raw materials, uh, emphasizing human rights and labor conditions in sourcing de decisions, right? So, you know, we don't want to send all of our business overseas if those people are being mistreated. Um, use of renewable energy in the production process, ensuring uh, that the use of product uh, creates a positive impact on the community, right? It doesn't, you know, create all these terrible gases and emissions. Uh, creating product recycling and reuse options, right? So that was one of the things. So ideally, you make it so there's no waste. Uh, but if there is waste, you want to be able to recycle and reuse. 
And if you can't recycle and reuse, then you want to dispose of it properly. Um, <clears throat> improving the impact of the product's use on uh, human and environmental health. So if you're handling these products, make sure uh, that there's nothing uh, you know, going to happen to your health. Uh, well, that's it for uh, Chapter 5. Uh, we'll move uh, quickly on to Chapter 6. Uh, as always, be sure to take whatever quiz is applicable to the week and the homework assignment, uh, tests and quizzes, all that are applicable uh, for that time frame. Uh, so that's it. As always, I want you guys to have a good day and a great week. If you have any questions, be sure to email me.